episode of the Randy Wilson Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Wilson. This is episode 43, and we have a legend with us today, Stogie T, elite hip-hop artist, often referenced as uh, poet MC. Uh, and I even referenced, uh, read a reference of him being the last OG, okay? Stogie <laughs> T out of South Africa, this is a treat for you guys today. If you're not familiar with him, get familiar. Uh, particularly speaking to those people here in the States. I'm sure everybody in Africa is familiar because the guy's been rapping strong for the past uh, 15 years solid. Um, I recently got familiar with him through a good friend of mine, Rock Creations. Uh, he put me on to a couple tracks. Togi T was recently on the track with uh, Benny the Butcher. That's crazy. That's crazy. I also uh, have been just really uh, educating myself on YouTube and watching all the interviews. Uh, Sway interviewed him, of course. Uh, he went in there and killed it. Uh, killed it. Like, <laughs> he, he's one of the top hyenas now. Uh, he's got a track out with Nasty C, another artist out of Africa. So, again, for those of you here in the States, definitely get familiar if you're not. You don't know many people who got tracks with Griselda, all right? You don't know many people like that. So, Stogie, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, man. Thank you very much for joining us. So how you doing today, man? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Thank you for having me, B. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and it's a pleasure, man. I've watched a lot of your interviews, Stogie, and um, I, I, I want to do something a little different with this one today. I want to, because I want to talk about our current times. I mean, the music, the music speaks for itself. Um, but... <clears throat> I find it extremely impressive, Stogie. We got we got to talk about the music. We got to start there at least. But I definitely want this conversation to evolve and talk about some of the current times, some of the things that um, we're dealing with today. But um, you know, for those of you who may not be familiar with you, can you just kind of give a little bit on your your music background? Yeah, so I've been I've been rapping like you said for over fifteen years. Um, kind of, you know. Uh, bouncing between, I had a band for a long time, for a long time, uh, doing me in the volume um, that I toured extensively throughout Europe with, um, and then the solo thing kind of happened after the band. Uh, but just being in and around the scene, I had a label that you know helped develop artists in, in the country as well. Something that I'm very passionate about is people, putting people on and and just the general you know health of the culture, you know at least artistically, you know what I mean. Um, so that's that's been my focus for for all this time. Bro. Hey, so I don't hear the term poet MC often. Mm -hmm. T how did that, how did you get coined with that? There was a time when like, you know, um, I, you know, coming up as an MC, I kind of like, you know, at one point my mom was kind of feeding me all this literature and stuff, you know, and, and, you know, I couldn't ignore it. You know, I couldn't ignore all that stuff that she was feeding me. Um, and I was I was I was in the streets at that time as far as like you know and trying to get my trying to get my rap stuff and whatnot. And to me there was just a merger there that happened. You know, it's just a seamless kind of authentic merger where I was like, you know, I don't ever want to have to leave out any part of me in anything that I do. You know, so yeah. so that just seemed like a marriage to me. It's like okay, well look, you know, um, so 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 one of my tasks was also to just you know be be, be you know look at the richness of language even as an MC even as like a forceful powerful MC but look at the the wealth and the and the depth in in, in language you know what I mean yeah. and what that, what that what, what that could do for my stories you know oh, yeah I can tell that because I've had to pull when I'm I, um, I listened to that freestyle that I posted the other day and right, right. thank you for giving us the words but I had to no, I was, <laughs> I'm like let me let me make sure I know what this <laughs> And I, and I saw that on uh, I saw that on, on the freestyle that you did on Sway as well. Uh, right. I guess you and know. Tell you, you know what I tell you. You know what I learned stuff like that from. Like you know, you you listen to Lauren Hill. You listen to a Lauren Hill verse, right? Yeah. She'll tell you in that verse you hear about Bob Marley, Nina Simone. So all that stuff. Sorry. So all that stuff helps to expand your mind because you're like, all you wanted, all you wanted was a dope hip hop track. But after listening to a certain verse, you now, you know, you're going into like Jamaican history, you're going into, you know what I mean? And that, I always felt like that was some of my favorite hip hop, where it was like, yeah, I hear your story, but I'm also getting plugged into all these other things that are, you know, that are expounding my, my, my view on the world, you know? Yeah. So, <clears throat> and I'm asking this question because I don't know the answer, okay? Mm. 
in in regard i don't know anything about the hip-hop landscape of africa okay well but i i learned in, in watching some of your previous interviews though that there is a difference between the type of hip your hip-hop is more like the hip-hop i'm familiar with from the states because you speak english got you but got you, got you. in africa where the native languages spoke um, yeah are you kind of like a pioneer in your genre of hip hop in Africa? Are you kind of one of the first that started rapping like you raps in, with the English language? Well, I'm, 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 I wouldn't say the first, I would say part of a second generation. Uh, I mean, because there were people in the 80s and 90s who kind of got into the cultural aspect of the of, 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 of hip hop, like, you know, the B-boy, the graffiti, all of it, they were kind of immersed in that, you know? And we kind of got the second wave of that, you know, um, where it was like, okay, we were in the in, in, in the urban cities, in the big cities. So we were like, oh, we just wanted a rap. We just wanted to be cool, you know? Okay. So that's how we got to us. Um, that's what was happening at the time. And, and, and so the best way to describe it to you is, to me, it's sound and language, right? So the sound either can be a boom, like straight boom bap, like what you call classic hip hop, right? But the but 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 the rapper can rap in like his native language, right? Yeah. And or you could have a soundscape that's more Afro beats, that's more like you know dancey, more yeah. you know uh, to the sound, you know. And Afro pop, I guess. and uh, exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. and 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 you know, and let's say the MC is a little like like you can tell that this guy's not he's not like singing. This guy's rapping, rapping, you know. Yeah. But he'd be rapping on stuff like that. So so it's kind of like it kind of. You know, it 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 it, um, it fluctuates between those those two worlds. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, and, and and there is, uh, and to be fair, there is a debate about what's what's authentic African hip hop. Is it the language? Is it in the content? Is it so that there's there's always this debate happening? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I mean, I would imagine that I would imagine. I mean, hip hop started in in a, in this New York, but I would imagine the way I way I'm looking at it is that I would imagine that authentic African hip hop would be, I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I guess I see the argument if you're speaking English. Right. You know, I mean, but I also see the argument to the advantage if you're speaking English. And I think that we live in a world, in, in a progressive world, it's like you speaking English with your, with your music allows the, the majority of the world to be able to interpret it when the majority of the world can't interpret often the native language so i don't know i mean i would imagine because you're speaking i, I would imagine because you rap in english get into that bag probably faster in some ways even though africa has more people than anywhere but i don't yeah. i don't know if more people that spend money on music i'm not sure like mm. look i mean you, you, to me what's fascinating about about that debate is that it's a debate that was happening like in the early 60s where, when Africa was getting, getting independence and there were all these writers emerging, right? So writers who, who went and studied in Oxford or studied in, 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 the, in the US, right? And were coming back and telling their stories and either telling them in English, right? Writing these big novels and whatnot, right? And getting global notoriety. And then others who were like, nah, look, our literature is more spoken and it's, it's, it's in the language, the richness of the language, you know? So this debate to me, I, I, I always kind of find it fascinating that it's still happening now. For me, I always feel that, I, I always feel like, you know, there isn't, we're not, come, there isn't one kind of African, right? Just yeah. like there isn't one kind of South African experience. And my experience is one of, of displacement. I wasn't born in my country. I was born in exile because my mom and dad had to run away because they were fighting the system. You feel me? And 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 that's another, my story. It's okay. You may not know what that means. When you say you was born in exile, can you explain that? Mm. I was born in Tanzania. So I'm South African, but I was born in Tanzania because in Tanzania, that's where that was that was the only safe place where you could go to as a struggle, someone involved in fighting apartheid in South Africa, you know? Okay. So 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 that's where the kids were born and whatnot. So so but that's my story. That's authentic. I'm not. I'm not making any any part of that up. You feel yeah. me? I have, to, I have to. I have to retrace certain parts of who I am. You know, whether and 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 part of retracing those things is through the music. Is is through you know um is through my authentic experience. Going okay, look, you know, I feel like my story is authentically South African, yeah. even though it's not typically South African. You feel me? Yeah. Just like just like just like you can say Eminem's story 
is authentically urban, even though he's not black. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can say that's you. an urban experience. You feel me? Yeah, I got you. Mm. Mm. Good. Okay. Uh, do you do, do you do you put out any music in uh, the native language at all? I I am not proficient. I mean, yo, I I, I I'd be lucky if I could if I could string up. 10, 10 words between my in-laws, you know what I mean? Wow, wow. <laughs> I'm out there, yeah. Okay. I'm out there, you know, yeah. But, I, I always have I always have, I always have to buy those, those expensive whiskey to, to get away from embarrassing myself. <laughs> so 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 what kind of what do you drink? Because that obviously uh, you can have drinks. I, I I see you, I see you. What is that? Is that uh I see right? Is that rum? I see rum there. Is this I got rum. I, I am personally a Scotch bourbon guy though. Personal. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a yak guy. Cognac all day. I like Cognac too. Don't get me wrong. I like Cavarsier. Okay. I love it. Yeah. You you are a star in your own country. Okay. Right. You have expanded that to Europe, the United right. States, and I'm not sure where else. Right. You got a song with Benny the Butcher. Like that's, yeah. that's major here. I don't know what that's like over there, but here, right. that's like... Right now, they are at the top right now. Right, right. I would imagine that, I feel like you, you've reached, have you peaked in Africa from your standpoint? No, not at all. No, not at all. No. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. I think, I think, I think it's because it's our, 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 our kind of vision is, is global. Like, I won't lie to you, bro. Like, like, I think here, like, there's a low ceiling for what I do. And that's the truth. There's a low ceiling for what I do here. You know, um, I've been incredibly blessed even here, but I, I just find that the ceiling is lower here for what I do. And, you know, I, I think there's, there's more room in the, glo in the globe for what I do. And that's why I spent, you know, 10 years in Europe, you know what I mean? With, yeah. with, with the band is because that's where I found, I found the audience and I found them. But, you know, that, I mean, that's why we, you know, we honed in on that venue. We said, look, what Griselda's doing is incredible because they are breaking, they are breaking the, 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 this, this idea, this mold of like, you got to do a certain, a certain kind of sound to, 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 to be relevant. Yes. I, I found that, uh, I, I wasn't familiar with Alonda Jackson either until I heard that song. How did you guys find her? Yo, uh, I, yo, I, the team is, the team is immense, has been immense for me, man. We, we have, you know, our, our our creative team is 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 so on the on the money right now. Like just as far as like you know, connecting with artists and 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 finding amazing, incredible artists all over the world. So Alondo, you know, they just yo, they just put it in front of my desk. I was sitting there waiting, and they put it in front of my desk. They said, "Yo, Alonda," and I was like, "Wow!" I listened to a couple of joints. So I was like, "Yo, she is incredible," and we have a great working relationship right now. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Go ahead. I was, I was gonna say shout out to Z Rich as well, uh, who's also part of the part of the team. But yeah, your team is your team is obviously doing some things because I mean they they connected with my guy Rock and that's how we connected. So they obviously Bro, they own it, man. I'm on Randy Wilson's podcast. What you talking about? <laughs> yeah. But man, it's been truly impressive, man. For those of you all listening, particularly over here in the states, man, you got to go listen to uh, that track with him and Benny the Butcher because like. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, I would imagine Bro, let it's me, charting over there. Is what? Is it charting? Yeah. So we, we when we dropped it, it was not, so I dropped two singles on the day. Right? It was "Don't Know" with Nasty C and "Animal." That's and, crazy too, by the way. And, and there were one and two. There were one and two all weekend. A one and two, you know. And then and then, and then, and, then, and, 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 the, and the funny thing is, I mean, you know, yo, you got Benny the Butcher on the charts, bro. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. But you know what, and Randy, I wanted to ask you, right? I wanted to ask you because I've noticed something. I've noticed that, that I mean, you've, I'm sure you've seen it as well, that there's a real kind of resurgence of like lyricism, right? Of like craft, of people, people really going, okay, you know what, man? I see, I see all this stuff that charts and I see the trap and I see all this other cool, cool stuff that's happening. But there seems to be a real, like people still kind of want to hear authentic kind of, you know, um, uh, lyric heavy hip hop, right? Are you you asking me? I'm asking you now. Yeah. What do you What do you think? If 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 you think that's true, and then why do you think that is? Thank you for asking that. So I am I'm a boom bap hip hop head. Like I I only like bars. 
I own, gotcha. I don't like, well, let me, let me stop, let me turn it. I am learning right. to embrace and understand sounds and rhythms. And I feel that with a lot of this younger trap music now, okay? Yeah. I feel like that's, that's the wave. So mm. um, I think a lot of it also has to do, 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 do with the geographic location of where you're at. Like in Virginia, okay. Virginia is in a, in a great space in the, on, in the map where, you know, we're in the middle. So we can get a lot of those northern those northern gems, but we can get a lot of those southern sounds. Southern, right. So, I mean, this is a very special place, man. I definitely encourage you if, when you're in the States again to come through Virginia because Virginia right now is making some strong waves in the hip-hop scene. Uh, shout out to Pusha T, who has launched of course. the Hairwave Music Group. And Virginia's beginning to be really that chitlin circuit. Like people, you go to New York, you go to go to Atlanta, do whatever you're doing, but there's a bag in, in Virginia right now waiting for artists such as yourself. So I hope that you can you can come visit us sometime. You ever you ever came through Virginia? No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, I I, I the first time I ever heard the word Virginia associated with hip hop was when Matt Skills said from where you know what I mean? when, oh, I first okay. that, when i first heard that like oh, you know i don't know when, when, when that dropped but um, no, that speaks uh, to, the very that speaks to your hip-hop knowledge <laughs> so you you've been nah, no problem. Yes. For a minute? absolutely i mean before he was just skills you know what yeah. i mean it was no bad skills yeah uh, and, and then obviously you know the the general kind of pop knowledge of like the um, you know the pharrells and the, you know what i mean um yeah. You know the the, the titties in them, yeah. So I mean, I I know I know it in that sense, but yeah, I, geographically, I you know I, I didn't place the two. You know what I thought? I thought I, I thought I thought there's something to be said about like a lot of these like like quote unquote old heads making podcasts and yeah. kind of giving people context to what the culture is. Because I mean, you can imagine like I have a 13 year old son. In, in like three years, my son's going to be gravitating towards the internet and, and if he's not already, right? And listening to all the, all these, all, you know, Roddy Rich and all of them. But for him to, 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 to bump into a, a, a Joe Budden podcast or Randy Wilson podcast and hearing people talk about hip hop and giving him context, it kind of makes you go, okay, let me go listen to Red Man. Let me go listen to that. You know what I mean? Sure, so yeah. that, might, that might be helping as well, you know? The Joe Budden's podcast came out it made me go back and listen to more Joe Budden's podcast. And I think that Rage in the, I think it's Rage in the Machine, that album. Yeah. I felt like it was, yeah. Joe, I felt like that was Joe's best album. And I feel like he stopped at the wrong time. I wasn't a super Joe Budden's fan before, but Joe can rap. But that's crazy to me, man. You're familiar with, uh, you learned about Virginia from Mad Skills. I was fortunate enough to have him on my podcast. Uh, Skills was on my podcast, uh, I don't know, maybe six seven episodes ago. They, they, oh, wow. They gave him a day in Richmond. It's called Mad Skills Day. And I was- Virginia, uh, wow. Yeah, I was honored to be able to have him on wow. the weekend. So uh, I'll definitely cut this clip up because that's a that's a big shout out for Virginia uh, with Stogie T in South Africa. Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah. Absolutely, he's a legend. You know, we know about skills, man. He's like, yo, like, yo, you know, we used to we, we used to catch his um his early joints before what's his name, Jack them joints. Um oh, yeah. for the dude from New York. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's you know, that's that's the there. But yeah. So uh so what what do you I mean you got some your your music is fairly new though. You dropped two new singles. That was like yeah, a so new, right. Yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we just—I kind of, think—I think we're prepping for the album. But I mean, as you can imagine, in this time, it, 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 you know, the 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 one thing you don't want to do—I mean, you know, outside of like you know the market or whatever—the one thing you don't want to do is appear to be tone deaf. You know what I mean? I don't—I don't want to be out here trying to sell an album, and you know what I mean, doing crazy promo for an album when people are dying. You know what I mean? That's real, so, man. So. so yeah, so, so, why, so that why this conversation is going to, I know this conversation is going to curve there because it's hard to really talk about anything right now other than what we faced with. Absolutely. Absolutely. So even that, I mean, it was like, I, I think more than anything, dropping the two singles was just kind of like, um, for us, you know, we, 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 we did a series called Freestyle Friday. Yeah, I've seen that. One of, some of the thinking around dropping the singles was also 
because we had gotten so much success when we did the series called Freestyle Friday, you know, which I know you dropped you, you dropped one of the, one of the freestyles. And, you know, I reached out to everybody, all, all my connects in Brooklyn and France and Australia and in, 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 in the, in, in the other parts of Africa to just kind of, you know, drop freestyles in the worst part of the, of the, of the, of the, um, you know, of the pandemic, right? When it was first, when it first hit us, you know, just to say, look, look as artists, we're the medicine and, you know, the, the, the best thing about being an MC is you don't need much else but a, but a, but a, but a camera and you know what I mean? Like, that's all you need, you know, just point and shoot and rap, you know? And, and so off the back of that kind of cultural moment, it was a big cultural moment in South Africa. I was like, yo, look, this is a good time to just kind of like put out, you know, put out some music because people definitely are receptive to it but as far as a body of work and an album you know you want to be able you want the opportunity to tour it to present it live to do all these things you know what i mean so it's kind of like these singles are definitely from the album but i just kind of we're gonna play by ear you know i mean if you're gonna if you're going to drop a couple tracks benny the butcher on one <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, awanda jackson as well respect to her absolutely nasty c on the other one uh, yes, sir. Uh, he represents, I guess, the new age. Uh, I would imagine. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's that's passing the torch. That's passing the torch. That's them. That's that's that. You know, he is definitely the MVP out here, man. You know. Uh, but, but, um, yeah. But if he's that guy, that means you you you're you like you're like Fab and Jada. You know what I'm saying? In in your country right now, though, like your relevance, you two on the track. That's pretty major. It seems to me for for hip hop in South Africa. Ron, did you say I'm like Fab? I, I, what I'm saying, the, the, I, no, but the, I'm oh. making, the comparison I'm making more of those, like my perspective on Fab in the States is that yeah. he's been consistent. He is, in my opinion, Fabulous, Jada Kiss, and Fat Joe have been the most consistent rappers over the past 20 plus years, meaning that they drop annually, or and they're and yeah. they're out and they're featured on all the new up and coming artists. So like, I didn't even know who Nancy. I knew who you were before Nancy C. Uh, you know what I read from that? Maybe maybe less of the Jada Kiss, but definitely Fab and, and, and Joe. Um, it, you, you might even throw Jay in there. Is that they 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 do they do a really good job of of of, of being themselves, but currently. You know what I mean? Like they stay current. It, you you don't listen to the music and feel feel like it's dated. You feel yeah. like okay, this can hit today, but it's still them. They, you, you don't you don't feel like they're losing any any anything that makes them them, you know. But so yeah, that's that's, 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 that's the reason why I made a comparison thing. because I got you. you. You've been consistent. You've been consistent in right, right, right. years. I'm sure a lot of people that started out with you haven't. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And particularly absolutely. if you tell me that the feeling in Africa is not as high, low, yeah. You no, know, then the motivation is it can probably burn out fast if you ain't you know getting absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yo, know, wow. can you speak a little bit to Nasty C? Kind of bring me in. Like, what's the difference between the new age hip hop in in Africa with an artist like Nasty C now? Like, what is that like? That's a great question. Look, I, I, I'll tell you this: Nasty C is is somewhat of an anomaly for us because um, he represents the the like today, in, in, like in such a visceral way, right? Because he doesn't come from any scene. There isn't a scene you can point to and say, yo, Nasty was bred here. He was molded here. He, Nasty spent, you know, from 10 to like 16, he spent listening to hip hop, <laughs> listening to T.I., listening to Wayne, listening, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he basically molded himself in his, in his, in his, in his bedroom. You feel wow. me? So the, yeah, so that I mean that's incredible to me because I'm like yeah. yo, I spent so much time in the field, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was it's such it's such it's such a it's such a, you know it's it's a mind blowing thing to like to 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 literally watch someone who became that good, all from um, testing himself against you know what he heard as as a global sound. That's why he 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 veers towards a global sound because he wasn't in the field with us he wasn't there wasn't you know what i mean there wasn't a scene for him to grab to 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 to, to, to grab onto you know he might have known there's an aka there's a there's a t there's a this but you know for him it was always like yo i, I want to be you know i want to be as good as ti i want to be as good as yeah. you know um ludo or whatever yeah I mean, I'm sure so that, that, that he's showing he's showing he's showing kids that dreams can come true clearly my God, and, and he's, I mean, he's 
genuinely talented. Anyone who anyone who hears Nasty C might not, might, you know, it might not be their taste, but you cannot say this is, you know, this this is good or, or uh, it's, you know, this kid's not talented. Yeah. See, man, it, it brings me to a point, you know. I, I watched an interview with Sway. Um, I basically, in watching both your interview and Nasty C's interview, I seen two different artists from two different two different generations, I guess. And uh, de definitely, because uh, you and I are from the same generation, I am not. I'm not a 20-some-year-old anymore. Uh, I think he's he's 20. I think he's a young man. And he he said he had never experienced uh, racism. And um, obviously, um, you know, when his brother came on and spoke, it was you know he had a he had a different response, and he's like 28 years old. Um, yeah. I, I think I think it, I think for us here in the states, it'll be very interesting for us to hear from you um, what both race what what the climate is like in Africa right now as it pertains to protesting and uh, discrimination. Is what does that look like right now? Let me answer that question by by first telling you a story. In okay. two thousand and uh, two thousand and one, Dead Press came to South Africa. Um, you know they came here. Um, um, and performed one of the best concerts I've ever seen, you know, of rap shows I've ever seen in my life. Um, and, and, you know, you can imagine coming from South Africa, how we, could, how we connected with that message, right? With that dead press, let's yeah. get free message. Um, but at the time, you know, our president was Tabo Beki, you know, well-loved president. He came right after Nelson Mandela. And, you know, they have a chant in that concert that's like, yo, dead the president, you know what I mean? And... And, you know, we were like, yeah, nah. <laughs> nah, we were, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I, think, I think that to me, that moment explains so much because it's like, yo, we identify so much with, with the Black American struggle for freedom, right? A lot of our, and I'm talking now as an African, a lot of our first examples of excellence were, African Americans, right? A lot of a lot a lot of the leaders, a lot of the leaders that you that you kind of, you know, that that, that came after the '60s were inspired by the vision of of, of King, the vision of, of of Malcolm X, you know, um, the civil rights movement. Like there was there was a there was a already very uh, a very clear uh, relationship between Africa, the continent, and the African American struggle, you know. Uh, the phrase that best describes that is distant relatives, right? Like distant relatives, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and and so if you look at, if you look at stuff in that context, you know, um, today in South Africa, you know, we don't have the kind of relationship with police, for instance, that you guys have. The pol I mean, in fact, I would say there are very few places in the world that have the kind of relationship America has with the police, yeah. but yeah. in general. The, 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 you know, our, our interaction with police is more corruption. It's more, yo, I was speeding, yo, here's a five, but here's a tenner. You know what I mean? That's yeah. kind of the, the general relationship, right? It's not one of brutality or one of, 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 of extreme violence. There are instances, but it's not, you know. Um, but, you know, when Black Lives Matter, and I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I shudder to use the statement because it means so many, not, not so many different, it can mean different things to different people. It can mean the organization, Black Lives Matter, which yeah. has a, you know, which has a very clear delineated purpose. Or it can just mean, yo, I identify with black, with the idea that black life, black lives should matter or, or matter, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, 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 so we understand that, right? But I think that's been embraced that's been embraced i'm seeing a lot of i mean we have sports stars who were who are big 10 years ago who are coming out now telling their experiences about how they were you know in rugby or cricket uh, uh, sports who we thought were beloved but they're, 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 they're expressing their, their their experiences of racism and how they were mistreated you know and all of that off the back of this george floyd movement or, or, or you know what i mean I can't i cannot deny nasty c's experience right in fact as i said to sway I wish my son has that experience. I wish my yeah. daughter can, can, can get on, 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 you know, on radio or TV and say, yeah. yo, what, what racism, you know? Um, and, uh, and even today, when I speak to my son, like I said to you, who's 13, I don't speak in, 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 in race terms. I speak in respect terms. I say, yo, whoever it is, 
If they don't respect you, demand your respect. You know what I mean? Because you can receive it from a white Chinese person, whatever, right? But I give them, I have to give them context. I have to say, look, this is the world, but for you, the only thing you should be concerned about at 13 years old is respect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so, so, so I think, I, I think it's, it's incredibly complicated because of the different perspectives, um, you know, that, 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 that come into this conversation. If, you know, you would literally have to ask me, yo, T, what do you think of this? And then I say, yeah, I agree with that. Yo, what do you think of this? Yeah, I don't agree with that. You know, I, I, I'm yet to find, you know, I'm yet to find a single group where I'm like, yo, I'm totally with them. I'm totally with them. I'm yeah. riding all the way with them. You know? Is it, um, fair to say, is it fair to say in Africa you deal more with classism than anything? Or... Because I, I heard you say in an interview recently that um, as big as as big as the country of Africa is, is it's owned, did you say it's owned by three percent? You gave a number, you gave a statistic of how many, how many, the percentage of who owned the majority of the wealth. Oh yeah, I remember that, yeah. Uh, so three percent, three percent of the wealth is controlled by um, you know, by, by, by a certain, a certain race, you know what I mean? Uh, like white people, you know? Um, and, 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 and that speaks to the legacy. That's speak, that honestly speaks to the legacy of like what the apartheid government, uh, uh, created, you know, they literally created a system where it was like, yo, we're going to save, you know, everything, all the program. Cause you know, today, you know, people would say, yo, we want, you know, we want social, uh, a social system that kind of speaks to the, 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 the oppressed and people who are kind of like living in poverty and certain segments of our society, generally, uh, you know, white segments with, with specific interests would say, yo, why are you giving people breaks when the government before this, the white government gave white people breaks? And they said, yo, yeah. we're going to, you know what I mean? They ring fenced a certain portion of the economy and said, yo, this portion is going to white people, you know. Yeah. So it's, 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 it, it, it speaks to that. It speaks to that legacy. I mean, you know, my, you know, um, we always joke that, like, yo, know, the day after apartheid was, you know, it's ended. You couldn't find one person who voted for the previous government. You know what I mean? You couldn't wow. find one racist. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like wow, like everybody. Okay, so nobody voted these people in. You know, you know, Randy. Where it becomes complicated is in South Africa. Wealth is generally characterized by a white face, you know, um, because of that history. And poverty is generally characterized by a black face. And so it may, it, 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 that can make it incredibly challenging to have conversations like class conversations because it's so clear. The, 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 you know what I mean? The division becomes so clear that, okay, well, white is rich and black is poor, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so, so conversations like, you know, well, what about, you know, just changing the face? All, all they have to do is change the face and they get an okay, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, 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 you know, the Band-Aid the, the band becomes easier to just kind of, you know, uh, uh, um, you know apply on, on the problem. And, and, that, and that makes it really complicated. So, we, you know, we don't have a very sophisticated um, political system in South Africa. People still vote along race lines. And you know, and I think it, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna go like that until, until black people or the, or the dominant party really fuck shit up. If they fuck shit up, like you know, corruption and, and people are hungry. Because at the end of the day, man, it's your stomach that speaks. You know what I mean? That's who really votes, bro. Yeah. So if you've been voting ANC or whatever it is, and you're hungry, yo, you don't look elsewhere. You know. Yeah, I've obviously never, I've never been to Africa. I, I, I think it's everyone's dream. I think everyone who's never been to Africa, their dream is to, is to get there. Um, it seems like when I've met people who are, who are native to the country, um, when we think about rich, like African rich is like on the whole, it's like gold. <laughs> like I think uh, Gates and, um, but I guess when you see, when you see the opposite end and you talk and you see poverty, it's, it's pretty extreme. Um, Absolutely. My wife said something one time that I never thought of before. Um, I bought her these uh, bought her these Valentine's Day cards, right? My I was right. supporting a local artist. Okay, it was African art, and um, 
she she just referenced one time. You never see African art, or oh, 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 we had it, okay here. Never see African art of lighter complected black people. Do you ever see that there? Do you ever see African art in the image of someone with fair skin? Randy, you didn't tell me we we doing a deep dive, bro. You didn't tell me we doing a deep dive, bro. Yeah, I, got, I, thought I, I thought we were gonna talk about some bars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's it's the deep dive. Hey man, that's um, what, that's what I want to make this special and unique, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate that question. You don't even understand. Yeah, I think. Look, I think you know. You you can imagine. I mean, as I said, you know, kind of segueing back to the hip hop thing. It's like. There isn't, you know, we're, we're not some monolithic, there isn't some, you know, one definition of an African, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that, that, that different, you know, um, that different cultures and different, uh, and different values represented when you say Africa or African, right? Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, we, we, the, we also, sh you know, we, we also show a deep distrust and a deep kind of cynicism towards the kind of fetishizing of Africans, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting incredibly proud when I watch the Lupita Nyong'o, you know what I mean? Like win the Oscar, because she's talented. I watch the movie, I'm moved. She's incredibly talented. But some part of me, <laughs> some part of me goes, Ah, I wonder if they're only doing this because she like really dark and like you know what I mean. Yeah, She's I beautiful, that. but I'm just yeah. saying you know what I mean. Like yeah. part of part of part of you just goes ah. You're taking a box. Uh, yeah, you know. And look, I mean, I mean, again, I, I you know, I think I think some level, some level of some level of um, it's the world, right? So you have to give people some some level of um some allowance, you know, and, and what I mean by that is, is, is if you obviously in, 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 in the United States, you have light-skinned black people. You've had yeah. them on television since a different world. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've had them, right? Yeah. Um, so that might not be interesting when you say from Uganda and she looks like she was on a different, you know? who yeah. you've seen from, the, from a different world. So you have to give people some allowance to say, look, and so when I walk into an office, let's say in the US trying to get a deal or whatever, trying to do yeah. business, and I say, this is who I am, I'm Stogie T, I'm from, I'm from South Africa. The first question, they, they you know, what's African about you? Like, you know what I mean? Because I got the hoodie on, I got the J's on, I got the, you know what I mean? The beats bumping, like like you said, Jada Kiss. So they go, yo, what is you, you know what I mean? Yeah. What is it that you, you know? So, so, so there is that. And, you know, I mean, you know, it, it's different when it's Burner Boy because Burner Boy is so different. It's so, it's like, you know, the music is different. You know, it's whiz kid. It's like Afro beats. It's like, yeah. okay, this is, this is quote unquote exotic. This is, you know what I mean? Um, so I, I, what I'm saying is you have to give an allowance to, you know, to, to the market because the market is like, always yeah. intrigued by originality so you know I, so i don't i don't press too hard on, on, on things like that but i think there's yeah there's definitely like i said a cynicism a a, a kind of you know low-key mistrust of like mm, i yeah. don't know man you know what i mean yeah, so that yeah. definitely does exist yeah yeah, yeah. I, on a lighter note <laughs> but <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> on a lighter note hey no one's asked these questions uh on a lighter no sir <laughs> On a lighter note, okay, how, how was the visit to Rock Nation? Did you get a chance to talk to Hove? No, 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 Hove was in uh, LA, so no, I did, I did not, I did not. It was, it was crazy, you know, um, what impressed me the most about being at Rock Nation, first and foremost, and I said this to my mom, was the sheer size of the buildings in New York, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, this is real, I need, I need to, you know, like, you, you guys might not appreciate this, you know, because they've been like that since the 40s, you know, <laughs> the sheer size of those buildings, right? They are so gargantuan, and they're so huge, and, and you think, like, you know, I was staying in Harlem at the time, right? And, you know, Harlem is, Harlem is tricky because one part of Harlem could be like, oh, wow, you know, super gentrified Airbnb, you know, yeah. cafe lattes. And then, you know, you turn to the left and it's like, oh, snap, skid bro. You know what I mean? You're like, yo, it's wild out here. You know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, seeing that and then just literally looking at this 
the size of this building and thinking back and going, yo, these, these dudes are on the top of this floor, right? These dudes who like had all the odds stacked against them, all the odds stacked against them. You know what I mean? In a, in a, in a, in a society that like, you know, you know, doesn't, doesn't regard them as much. And they were able to ascend, you know, these buildings and be at the top there and not just at the top there, but at the top, they're selling their stories, telling yeah. their stories. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The alcohol they drink is owned by them. Yeah. The music they sell, they listen to is owned yeah. by them. The clothing, you feel me? So yeah. that to me, that was powerful beyond, beyond, beyond anything else. That was incredibly powerful. But you know, I, I, I you know, I, I, I'll tell you, low key. I thought I was going there to, you know, to play some demos or play some music. And I ended up getting schooled, bro. I ended up getting schooled on business, on value, on on cultural um, cultural assets, and you know, and and and, and, and you know, and, and how to and how to and and how to monetize your your, your value and how people, you know, uh, um, and, and 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 ownership. You know what I mean? And ownership. Yeah. That's that's yeah. really yeah. I, I was there for like three hours and I was getting schooled on that, you know? So that was powerful, you know? Yeah. When, when you made that run through New York the last time, I'm, what, you went through Rock Nation, you went to Sway. Did you go to the Breakfast Club? No, I didn't. I went to, I went to Revolt. I didn't go to Breakfast Club. Um, yeah, you know, bre- the Breakfast Club is a little different. Uh, you know, um, I, I mean, you, you might know more than me, but it feels like Breakfast Club is more like, okay, it's like you know, I'm selling something. Here's the product, yeah. or you know what I mean. Uh, and, and you know, I'm I'm kind of doing a run, like you said. Uh, where sway to me was like a a culture thing. I needed to take a certain box. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. yo, you feel me? Yeah, I get it. That that is over here. It's like when when artists are getting ready to put out a new album, they just they make that it's a circuit. You know, they, mm-hmm. you need you do need to go drop it on a flex stuff. You of course, that's the next. That's the next one. Of course, exactly. <laughs> of course, that's the next one. Definitely. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, man, we, I'm gonna close here with you. Uh, I, I play a little game in the end. I got one more serious, one more serious question. Uh, how, how is what is Corona like over there right now? Oh man. So initially, you know, we were really slow on the uptake. Um, they shut down the country pretty early, so we weren't seeing a lot of new cases. Uh, and I think we just got off, not, not overconfident, but what happened was the economy started to suffer inevitably, right? Because people aren't working and whatnot. So people, you know, you know, start putting pressure on the government to open some things up. That happened and inevitably the spike happens, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and you know what's crazy about the, about, about the second spike is once people have been out during Corona, it's like, you know, aside from, okay, yo, this person died, that person died, you know, you might know some personal experiences. People don't have the same level of fear that they had when they first heard the word pandemic. You know what I mean? I know. So, okay. you know, yeah. So, so now people are, you know, out partying and stuff and doing little private, you know, get togethers and just trying to get their thing going because again, they're like, yo man, if I can't eat, what's the point? You know, what's the That's point the of like you being quarantined? Thing, yeah. That's the same thing. Um, the same um, thing. Yeah. And, then, and that, that, that's what's incredible about, about, about this corona thing is that pretty much everyone is experiencing the same thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. At, at different degrees. That makes, um, that's, that's just, this is very real life when, when, when dealing with the same thing here that you're dealing with there, vice versa. But look, man, it's a pleasure. Uh, you don't know how much it means to me. Uh, it means to us to have you on the show. Yes, sir. Uh, I became an instant fan because of the lyricism. I just want you to know that's who I am. Like, you, you made me have to pull out the dictionary. Though. I was like, you made me have to work for it. <laughs> <laughs> but before we close, man, I, I like to drop seven random questions on you, okay? And you just give me quick, quick answers in regard to, don't put a lot of thought into it, okay? Who was your childhood crush? Childhood crush. Um, what's the name from um, the show with Queen Latifah? Um, Living single. What's her name? Um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kitty. Kitty is it? Uh, what, what's her name? Um, I know, let me see. I you know, know what you're talking about? What are you talking about? Hey, I can't think of the name though. The Queen of people. I know what you're talking about. She was a living single. She was like the, the, the hot mommy and living single. You yeah, know? Yeah. 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 Know, she was. Know. She was always a crush. She was always a crush. Yeah. She was. Uh, did you play sports growing up? Yep. Where would you play? Basketball. 
So you got game? <laughs> listen, man. It was. I mean, I gotta ask. I mean, cause cause I got I got some game. I got some game, man. So like most of the time when I walk oh. on the court, I'm confident that I'm probably the best player. Or at least I was. I was. So I right. Got only way. To, only way to know it is to show it, bro. Okay. So, you know, it, it's either gonna happen in Virginia or in South Africa. So either way, it, it's gotta happen. You, you play two K. <laughs> Yeah. All right, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you my name on 2K, man. We're gonna test it out on there first. Who no, the no, okay. All right, all right, bet. Who, who's your favorite team in the NBA? I would imagine it's the Lakers, right? No, it's not. Who who is it? It's the Clippers. You gotta you gotta ride with Kawhi because like, you know, to me I just I just identify with the with um you know with um not not the underdog but um you know the the, the the guy who done it, who, who who done it the hard way, and what I perceive as the right way. I got you know you. what I mean? He, I got you. you feel me? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's respect, man. So, uh, you know, everybody now is on these special diets: a vegan, a vegetarian. They don't eat this, they don't eat that. Just curious, like, what is a common food in Africa that may be uncommon to the states? Like, you know, we eat chicken, <laughs> right? <laughs> Turkey. A lot of people eat pig, you know what I'm saying? What what is what's common there that may not be common here? Pop, it has to be pop. Pop is mealy pop. So mealy pop is like maize meal, grounded maize meal, like maize, like uh, you know, like corn. Yeah. Yeah, grounded. Okay. Yeah, grounded and made into like uh, you know, yeah, into 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 a pop, into like almost like um um it's um it, it, it's like carbs. It's, it's carb heavy. It's basically a replacement for rice or something like that. Okay. 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 In 2020, we should expect what from Stogie T? In 2020, um, I mean, we are in 2020. I know. What, like, but, like right now. Yeah, but what should we expect? Like, what's what's the? What's, oh. Uh, uh, I think I just want you to know the name. Anyway, yeah, you doing that, bro? You doing that? <laughs> You doing that? Um, got two more questions for you. Got two more questions for you. Uh, who, who? What artist? What? What artist inspired you as a young artist coming up in the game? Like, who was it that was an example that you kind of inspired to, you know, want to make yourself better because you've seen something in them? Uh, I mean, you know, I can I can give you a top ten list of people that I love, but someone who I'm 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 really I'm 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 kind of revisiting more and more is 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 like a loin, right? And and mm -hmm. and mostly because of this idea of vulnerability, right? Like Lauren Hill is, you know, is this female rapper who, you know, against all odds is with these dudes and is in, in, in an incredibly male dominated kind of a, a, a game. And, you know, she's told, yo, you're pregnant. You can't have this kid because you're the hottest artist right now. And she refuses to have the baby. And it, it kind of tells me that, you know, all these vulnerabilities, all these things that are called weaknesses, you got to you gotta, you gotta lean into that shit. You know, you got to mm -hmm. literally go, ah, right, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not shying away. I'm leaning into it. Vulnerability can be powerful, you know? And okay. I like that. I really like that idea, you know? So, yeah. so Lauren is someone that, that, that to me, always kind of comes comes back. But I mean, you know, I can, I can name a slew of artists. Well, hey, I'll tell you what, because we, we about to close. I'm not going to hold you too long, but I got, let me just throw, let me just throw a pair, let me throw a few pairs at you. So you, you cool. Jada Fab, who gets the nod for you? Fab. Fab. Yeah, me too, I would agree with that. Uh, LeBron or Kobe? Kobe. Yeah. Who do you, do you think the Clippers or the Lakers this year? Now, I know that you rival Kawhi, but do you, you know, you got people leaving the bubble. I mean, Lou Williams just left the bubble, you know, so. Yeah, it's got to be Lakers. It's gotta be Lakers. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I hate that, too. I hate that, too. But, yeah, you know. Hey. I, I, wish Gian, I, I wish Giannis does something. I wish Giannis does something, bro. But, you know, yeah, I got to. Giannis, 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 in my opinion, if he ever develops the IQ and the jump shot, mm. he's just, he's just a, he, he, he's like LeBron-ish. I mean, LeBron got core awareness, IQ, but- Yeah, he's got everything. Yeah, if, if, if he gets the jump shot and the, and the court awareness and the IQ and the leadership, I think the leadership is key. You know, I don't think yeah. that as a leader uh, as amongst other people yet, but uh, he's definitely, he's definitely top, 
I say he's top three, top he's top five in the NBA for sure. Arguably top three. Yeah. Well, look, man, it has been a pleasure to have you on the show, man. When you come to the states, man, you got to come to Virginia, man. You got to. I'm come. coming to Virginia. I, I I I got some I got some pippins. I got some old pippins that I might I might bring out too to the court. Yeah, I might have I might have some hey, man, some old just, pippins I got to bring out look, to the court. Hey man, just just keep me out the post, all right? Just keep me out the post. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that, man. <laughs> All right, bet, bet. Yo, Randy, bro, thank you for having me, bro. I, I really appreciate it, King. No doubt, man. I appreciate you, man. I know this interview was a little different, um, but I feel like, feel like in listening to all your interviews, you're more than an artist. And the way you speak, you know, uh, it, I just had to go in some of those areas with you because I feel like that's, I want to, my goal with this podcast is to show past the artistry and let people get more connected to the person. So, man, hopefully this is the time, man. Hopefully we'll do more things together and know that, man, you are building fans over here in the States, man. I'm telling every respect. You, man. So, uh, yeah, expect, expect a bunch of more people from Virginia to be peeping your profile because they, they watching, man. Shout out to VBA, yo. Bless. Appreciate it, man. I'm going to make sure I, let's, I take the skills too, man. Nah, no doubt. All right, man. Respect, man. We'll be in touch. Bless up, King. Thank you.